Hi everyone, it's Dawn Fisher of uh, Morning Glory Needleworks. Welcome to my 14th Floss Tube video. And again, I'll, as always, thank you to everybody who subscribed, commented, liked my channel. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And I'm gonna do my little um, intro um, blurb here. I always, um, any links or anything I talk about, I don't think there'll be anything today, is in the comments section underneath um, the video. There'll be links to my Etsy shop, my Instagram, the Stitch of the Month Facebook page, which you are more than welcome to join. We, we love new members. My Morning Glory Needleworks Facebook page, um, my bio.link page, which actually has everything on it. You just click on that and then There'll be links to everything else, like uh, buy me a coffee, that kind of stuff. So um, I can't believe it, but it's already the 15th of July. It just seems like I did um, the last video, but here's our new video. So, um, oh, and also, I also do chapters. I forgot to mention that. So I, what I do is I put a timestamp for when each section begins. So this one will have like three or four different sections. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, or if you want to rewatch, hopefully you want to watch the whole thing. But if you just want to rewatch a second a section or just skip on to a section, just click on the timestamp next to it and it'll take you right there. That way you don't have to go through a whole long video. Um, this video um, probably will not be very long, kind of short and sweet. We've got a lot going on here. So, um, I, but I just wanted to um, get my video out and get it out there. I even dress casually in my Weird L Yankovic t-shirt from when we went to see him in concert quite a few years ago. I don't know if you call it a concert. I guess he was playing music. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, back to my life update. So I want to thank everybody who commented, offered healing thoughts prayers, whatever um, you could offer for um, Jeffrey, who's my significant other. He had surgery on July 12th. Um, if you haven't watched Floss Tube 13, he was um, recently diagnosed with a very early stage of colon cancer. And I'm very I'm excited, pleased, happy to announce the surgery went very well. Um, they did um, laparoscopic surgery, so he didn't have to have a big uh, incision. He has like one incision on his stomach and then a few little ones where they poke stuff in there, whatever. But the surgery went very well. Um, the surgeon didn't see any spread of the cancer. Um, his CT scan also did not show any spread of the cancer. So we're just really um, lucky that he. Um, did the at-home test, and then it showed blood in his stool microscopic, so it wasn't even visible. And then they did the colonoscopy, and um, like three weeks later, he's having surgery. So um, he is still in the hospital. He's doing very well. Of course, I, you know, I go visit him every day and talk to him on the phone several times per day. And um, so the I think the hardest part was for me anyway, he had to be at the hospital at 530 in the morning. So <laughs> that's pretty early. Um, he didn't sleep much the night before. And well, neither did I, but he, he slept even less. But um, we got him there in time. He was first on the uh, agenda for his surgery. So um, I was there with him for about 11 hours and finally just um, came home. But the surgery went very well. Um, He's uh, hopefully will be in the uh, be home, maybe even tomorrow. They're saying his insides are starting to work again. Everything's starting to work. They just took removed um, the surgeon just removed a section of his sigmoid colon, and um, hopefully that will be all he has to have. As far as we know from the doctors we've talked to, um, of course they sent the piece out and they'll do some kind of a section where they slice it into sections to see how far it's spread um, within the colon. But um, the uh, the early 
prognosis is he won't have to have anything else, no chemo, no radiation. So that's what we're um, looking forward to or looking for those results. Um, again, we're very lucky. They caught it early. I, um, all I can say is please do your in-home tests, whatever our doctor every year just sends one home with us. And, um, and then if needed, you get a colonoscopy. Um, I get one like every five years because our family has a history of, of colon cancer, but, and other reasons, but, um, so anyway, yay, good news. I'm excited. And again, thank you to everybody who, um, who was thinking of us during this time. We, we do appreciate it. So the next, I'm gonna move right on. So I, I tried to talk about some of the antiques in my collection. This one is something I, I don't remember where I got it, probably at a flea market or something. It's um, a wonderful, these were very common. This is a girl's, sewing book it's um it's a sewing sample book she took a class or in school or whatever and had to stitch samples and made this book you can see the front is um beautifully embroidered with satin stitch and her initials um actually today when i pulled this back out to look at it um i realized let's see what it is let me show you it it opens up, it's held together. And on this side is um, like this, this page has general principles. And then on the other pages, it talks about what, what the sewing sample should look like. So this has a lovely little sewing sample right here in the front. And it had come detached and I was looking at it and on the back here, I did not realize is, I don't know if you can see it, maybe not. It's hard to see pencil on fabric, but her name is written in pencil on the back here. Her first name is Amelia and her, her last name is Koch, K-O-C-H, Koch. So anyway, that's, that's her name. So I was very excited because I had no idea what her name was. It's not written anywhere else in the book. So it was exciting to see that it was um, written on this piece of fabric that had fallen out. Most of them are stitched in place. I don't know why um, this one came out, whether it was um, glued and came apart. But this one is actually um, pieces of, you can really see it here different strips of fabric that were sewn together and she used different techniques to um, sew the edges together. There's like a hem stitch here. She used a, a darker colored thread so you could see all the stitching. So there's stems, it looks like back stitch. There's some um, shows on the back here, the uh, seams, how the seams are sewn together. See that there's um, feather stitch. I think those are probably insertion stitches. Oh, I can see where she drew pencil on there to follow the lines. So feather stitch, blanket stitch, herringbone stitch. Um, here's a nice example of, um, get that to focus in, uh, hem stitch down here at the bottom. But I love reading what they have in the book. Now this it can't be that old because this is type written using a typewriter and maybe um, I, carbon carbon paper. Is that what it was that we used to use in between to get more than one copy of something? So here's your general principles of sewing, stitching, sewing. Um, so your poise. See that all this is for the teacher. See that all have correct poise in sitting, chest up and feet touching the floor. Tell them to sit tall. The sewing seat should be low. Uh, position of work. The proper way to hold the work is on a line with the chest. So it should be up here by your chest. 
The light should come over the left shoulder so the hand will not cast a shadow on the work. Preparations, I know you all do this. Clean hands, clean nails, and a clean face, hair combed, and a clean apron. I do that. Do not rest any part of the arm on the desk. Do not fasten the work to the desk or the knee. Do not put the work or thread to the mouth as, as that will soil it. Uh oh, no licking your thread. And then it goes on to tell about needles, uh, about sharps, betweens, ground downs, which are the shortest needles. I've not heard that before. Um, in passing a needle, hand the eye of the needle to the person. Ground downs are excellent for school use as they do not bend or break easily. So those must be very short, short needles. So, and then it talks about, you have to hold the thread in the right hand, uh, the end of the thread to the left, measure the distance, the length of the arm and thread the end that hangs in from the spool. So there you go. Now you know how to thread a needle and how to sit, make sure you wash up first. Um, so then it gives some more information here. It says the threads of the fabric, which run lengthwise of the material are called the warp. The woof, W-O-O-F, woof runs crosswise and forms the salvage. The thread is cut, never broken. I've seen people where you tear, pull the thread and break it. Um, three different kinds of scissors, blunt with neither tip pointed, medium with one tip pointed, and then with both tips pointed. They don't have a name for that one. It says uh, medium is usually used. So anyway, those pages are for the teacher. So this next section is um, with her samples is stitching or back stitching. So stitching is done taking a short stitch backwards on the right side of the material and a stitch of twice the length forward on the wrong side. The stitches on the right side should meet forming a continual row of stitches. So here's her sample of back stitching. And down here at the bottom, you can see it's kind of, it's a, um, well, I'll tell you what it is because it says, so it also talks about running and back stitches. Uh, running and back stitches made by taking three running stitches and a back stitch. Every third or fourth, third or fourth stitch will meet. Um, shearing, this is what she's done, a gathering shearing, S-H-I-R-R-I-N-G, shearing, is done by making several parallel rows of stitching. And then I believe you pull the, th or hold the threads and like pull the fabric together. So it gathers, it's kind of, it, it looks kind of like smocking. So the next page is, um, talks about chain stitch, about how to do a, um, a chain stitch and an outline stitch. There's three different types of stitching on this next sample. Cross stitching, talks about that. Make a small knot and bring the needle up at the lower right-hand corner. Now, most of us are taught, I was taught anyway, to do it at the bottom left-hand corner. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. If you always work the other way, work from the first stitch from right to left, it doesn't matter as long as all the stitches are worked the same way. Now, what she's actually um, worked here is what I learned as um, like chicken scratch. She's actually stitched it on gingham fabric. Up here are her, um, what was that? Outline stitch and chain stitch, very fine chain stitch, outline stitch. And then you can see the cross stitches here on the gingham fabric. So that's kind of neat. Um, there, this, um, page talks about overhanding. Overhanding is an overstitch used to sew selvage edges together, also for seams and damask hems. And then uh, the next sample here is a French hem or a damask hen. 
him. So here's these samples. Again, I know I know it's kind of hard to see. I do. Um, I have brought this to some local retreats with me to show people, especially after I got it. But this this is actually the back side of the fabric. There is. Um, there we go. You can see it. This shows the back side and how she stitched it together. These are um, actually stitched on this page, and this here is a French hem or a damask hem. I've always heard it called a French hem. And it tells about how to do that. Each There's a, a lot of instructions here on how to do everything. I just kind of wanted to go through the book and show you some of the neat stuff. Here's more hemming and facing. It tells how to um, work each of these. These I really like. This is feather stitch. Briar stitch, which is also called coral stitch, and cat stitch or cash catch stitch, cat stitch, C A T stitch, or catch stitch. Um, so it says cat stitch is used mostly for flannel hems and seams. And then the feather stitch is ornamental, and the briar stitch, these are all ornamental. You can see those up at the top. Here is the um, cat stitch, which to me is herringbone. It looks like herringbone stitch. If you see it up close, that's what it looks like to me. And then uh, bias piecing and blind stitching. So um, this sample here, you can kind of see was pieced and very well, the, the lines all match up. This is bias piecing. And then this is a blind, like a blind hem stitch that you learned how to um, hem your pants or a skirt if you, if you learned how to do that. Um, so it doesn't show. I'm not going to read you all the directions. You can probably find directions online. And then this is um, tucking, piping, and mitered corners. So this is tucking. I've had shirts and blouses with, um, eh, that's really hard to see, tucking on them. This is piping. You can see there's red along the edge here where she put uh, piping in. And this is a beautifully mitered corner here. If you ever hem stitch anything, um, you might want to miter the corners on it. Um, let's see, there's different, there's, Flat fell seams, French seams. Here are uh, rolled hems and edging where she's attached um, edging and it showed, she learned how to turn the corner with this lace edging like they would do on um, handkerchiefs. Um, here's gathers set in a band and these are loops down here at the bottom like for a, uh, a button or a ball button would, um, you would make this bigger and you could loop over it or um, like hooks and eyes could hook into this. And this, you can see this is gathered here under this band. This book is really heavy. And um, these are interesting. This is, um, the top one is a flannel patch. It tells how to make a patch in flannel. And she's used the cat stitch of the herring, what I would call a herringbone stitch. And then on the bottom here is a darning straight tear in wool. Now, I don't even know where this was repaired. I cannot see it anywhere. Here, this little section square was cut out. And then you can't see it, but it's actually um, herringbone stitched around the edge to patch it in. So this is something uh, that you may have had to do before you could um, graduate. This is what girls were taught in school. I don't know, this may have been around the 40s. I'm not sure, there's no date. But again, with the typewriter, I would say it's probably, cause it's, they're just pieces of paper that she glued in here and they're not, um, she was probably handled, handed this bundle they made these books themselves. You can see there's a holes here and then thread, just a cord to hold it together. 
This is darning. She actually darned that hole. It's hard to see, but if you look closely, you can see the, um, the weaving of her darning stitch. Um, here's uh, simple buttonholes and buttonhole bars. So they used to have to do buttonholes by hand. So these are actually edged with buttonhole stitch to keep them from fraying. They would cut a slit and then um, do the buttonhole stitch along the edge. Now this is, um, this is more embroidery. This next section, the top one is called um, Kensington, which I'd never heard it referred to as that, but those are long and short stitches. It, like a, a lot of people, it's embroidery um, that you do. She also did hem stitching, and then there was hem stitching from left to right and from right to left. And these are fancy, um, these are drawn thread where she actually pulled threads out up top here is the Kensington. And then the bottom is where she drew, withdrew threads and did these um, fancy stitches. I'm sure a lot of you have done that. I've done that before. Uh, next page, again, here's some embroidery, shadow embroidery, which I've done and I've actually taught where all the stitches, most of the stitching is on the back. It's like a herringbone. And on the front, you just see a line of stitching, but you work it on a very fine, um, I'm trying to see, I don't know what kind of fabric this is, but a very fine fabric that you can almost see through. And then the threads just kind of show through. And then the bottom of this is a satin stitch, but you can see, whoops, there we go. Kind of see just the shadow of the thread on the back. And then the center is French knots on that. And here we have, um, here's some buttons sewn on, hooks and eyes. And then the bottom hook on this top section is actually covered with a teeny tiny buttonhole stitch to make it um, more decorative. And then these are just um, French knots and seating stitch. And final page, um, this is blanket or embroidery buttonhole stitch. And then the bottom sample is scalloped edge and principles of padding. So there you have it. So this is this wonderful um, book. I, I can't resist stuff like this. Um, it's just so interesting. This is heavily padded here and see how thick the stitching is. But this is Amelia's um, sewing book. So this is how she learned to sew. So maybe your parents or grandparents, depending on your age, great grandparents maybe learned, this is how they learned to sew. I of course took home ec. My mother was actually a, um, a home ec major in college and um, an art minor. And she taught home ec and tailoring and other things like that. I never got the actual sewing bug. I'm more of a hand, uh, hand stitcher. So there you have it. This is what I wanted to go over this time is this um, Amelia's antique sewing sample book. So I hope you enjoyed that. And I wanna give an update on uh, Sari Outfill. I'm so excited to say, that I finished section 10, which is the final section of this sampler. If you haven't followed along, you may want to go back and watch the other videos. I hope you do. And um, Sari is stitched on 46 count linen, which matches the original sampler. The sampler by Sari was stitched in 1709. And it looks like she actually finished it in 1710 because there's another date on the bottom of the sampler. This is, it's stitched on 46 count, but it's stitched over three threads, which is very typical for that, um, that age of stitching. And, but with hers, some sections are stitched over four threads, which is why I had to break it into sections because it's difficult to chart something over four threads on the same, uh, chart as something done over three threads. It just, I couldn't get it to work. So I just broke it into 10 sections. So it's kind of fun once you finish a section, it's like you've 
finished and moved on. So um, what I'm going to do, I, I have a picture of section 10 because I've actually moved back on the sampler. Um, and I will show you um, section 10, but I have moved back to further up. I don't remember what section this is. I think it's seven or eight, but it has a uh, detached buttonhole. It's very hard to see these open petals are going and acorns are going to be filled with detached buttonhole stitch. So I wanted to work everything else first and now I'm going back. Um, this one I've taken out like three times because I don't like the way it's looking. This first one isn't too bad. It's, I know it's hard for, for you to see, but in this section here, there's some detached buttonhole and then several of the other sections further up. This is a very big sampler. It's about um, six and a half inches, seven inches wide, and it's 36 and a half inches long. I can't wait to take it off the scroll frame so I can see the whole thing because all I've been seeing is just these little sections. It's, it's a wonderful sampler. I, I've had a, so much fun stitching it, even with the frustration of having to take stuff out and redo it because I either stitched it wrong, one section I diagrammed it wrong. So I had to take out a lot of stitching and move everything over and redo it. So again, this is, um, I'm back up, up here doing these um, detached buttonholes. I kind of took a break and I'm working on a, on, on a new design um, that um, I hope to be, I hope to release soon. So um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, go to my PowerPoint and show close-up pictures of um, band 10, section 10 of Sari Outfill. Okay, so you can see this is this was a very fun sam uh, section. I, I enjoyed it. It was it was a challenge. It was a lot of fun. It's not very big. Um, the the top band is um, actually double herringbone, so that was fairly simple. And then the bottom band here is actually just two rows of back stitch, which I thought was really unusual. They're not anything fancy. It's just plain old back stitch, and I wasn't sure. Um, I thought that's what it was, so I pulled the sampler back out because I had charted it many uh, quite a while ago. So um, I looked at it, and it is just plain old two rows of back stitch. Now you can see these other areas are um, this big vine here and all the uh, flowers. And sing, except for the like the pink and green cross, those are all done in diagonal cross stitch with some um, double running little um, filigree um, lacy things on their tendrils, I guess you would call them. But it, it was very interesting um, trying to figure out how to turn the corners. I mean, I had it all charted. And I, when I charted, I actually draw the lines so I could see how to do it. And I love um, diagonal cross stitch. I use it on a lot of my original designs that I do. Um, it, it just makes a really nice heavy vine. So um, if you take any of my other classes, you may learn how to do this, but it was kind of fun. And actually, since I love this so much, I was very excited to find it on this sampler. It is all stitched over three threads. And then there's some just um, running seed stitches in the center of this weird little flower thing here, uh, the white one and the yellow one. And then off to the left, you can see her initials again. And off to the right is the year 1710 when she finished it. Now the original sampler has some other embroidery, um, uh, reticella work at the bottom. I'm not. I've done it, but I am not proficient enough or an expert enough to diagram it and teach it and, and put it in a chart. So, but in that section off to the side was the year. So I just pulled that out and put it in the same color up to on the uh, right-hand side of this, because I wanted to make sure the end date was in there. 
So she's like us, she started it in 1709. I don't know when, but finished it in 1710. So um, it was just kind of fun. This, this band, again, was a lot of fun to do and um, challenging and interesting. And I like, I like different using the different stitches and um, just seeing how they look. So now I'm going to um, move on. So um, once I get all the detached buttonholes done, I have to go back and tweak the, um, the charts and the diagrams. I've made little marks all over my copies because I print them out. I used to work off the computer, but then I, I found uh, off the computer screen, but I found a laptop. I found I should work off from the actual chart and diagram, just like anybody stitching it is going to do. That way I get the feel for what I need to change, what, what there are difficulties in doing. I follow my own diagrams that I've done. So if they don't work out right, I can go back and tweak them and make sure that somebody else can actually stitch this without me sitting over their shoulder or without like me pulling the original sampler out and go, was this really like this? Um, so I, I haven't decided what I'm gonna be, how I'm gonna release this. I may release it just as a chart, but um, and probably have a video maybe available with some of the stitches demonstrated. So you could just go look at the video. Um, but I may do a class and maybe offer, um, the kit for this and then work sections of it um, on it, maybe a, another piece that would a companion piece to this. I'm just debating. I'd like to hear from anybody who was interested in this. What would you like? Would you rather just have a chart? Do you want a class? If I teach a class, I can bring the original sampler and you can look at it. Um, when you compare them side by side, they're very close, except of course, the original, the, the threads are very faded. Um, I have charted this using the beautiful colors on the back, the original thread she used. I also feel this is very close to the color of the linen that she used. Um, it's very dingy now I you know you figure it's what 300 years old so you'd be dingy too but um I just I really like this color I coffee dyed this myself it's very simple to coffee dye so um because I couldn't find a 46 count that was uh, the color I liked but this is very nice linen and it's stitched in uh bell soie or classic color work silk so anyway I'm just, but I would like some feedback. Would you like to take a class and learn some of the history and learn how to do the stitches with, with me there so I can show you and demonstrate um, the stitches or would you rather just buy the pattern? I, I just would really like to know because I'm, like I said, I'm in kind of a quandary of, of making the decision of what what's next. What do I do next with this? I will probably... Um, what I'm thinking of doing, I still have to do a lot of detached buttonhole. I'm just working on getting the, I don't want it to, I want it to look right. Let me put it that way. I'm also thinking about hem stitching this. I probably will not frame it because I bring my stitch pieces with me a lot of times when I travel or when I go to a class. And if it's 36 and a half inches long, unframed, in a frame, it's going to be huge and I won't be able to carry it. So what I may do, uh, the original, I guess it was framed, but I don't know when it was framed, but it was also hem stitched. So I may hem stitch this one and then maybe put a backing on it and roll it up and keep it in a, a roll of some kind, maybe make a special roll that it, um, that it fits into and I can tie it close and it can travel safely with me without getting damaged. So again, I would love your thoughts. Please comment, let me know. Um, I'll be posting pictures and showing again as I do the um, detached buttonhole. And once I get that finished, I will show you for sure. Next, I have 
Um, I, I always have a million ideas in my head and sometimes I actually sit down and, and put them together. I did this little piece um, a while ago. It's a new teaching piece. I haven't submitted it anywhere yet, but I love alphabets and love stitches. Of course, I have my um, alpha, I have several alphabet of stitches um, designs that um, I use as teaching pieces. They're usually two day classes. So I decided to do something smaller and something you can, you may be able to finish it in class, which it'll probably be a two day class because there's a lot of stitches, but um, I really, I love this so much. So what this is, this is called spool of stitches. I don't have a spool yet for it, but I've got my name there and there's every letter of the alphabet. And then every letter has a matching stitch below it. So there's Algerian Islet, um, C is, it uh, looks like Captive Cross, and E is Islet, F is Foliage. So you can see this is done in sulky thread. So it's wonderful. This is a um, 27 count banding. The edges are already finished. I love this. And this is a, a selection of silky threads. It's a, a collection they have that all these colors come in the same um, little bundle. So I, again, I haven't figured out how to finish this yet. And I've got a spool of stitches. I actually finished it last year, 2021, but things got in the way. Um, there's Z is zigzag stitch and Y is Yugoslav stitch but it was a lot of fun. And this is something small. And the A's and or all the letters are actually specialty stitches also, but there's only like three or four specialty stitches um, for the alphabet, because I didn't want to have to come up with 52 stitches. So, um, but it's just, it's a, I really enjoyed it. Very fun. It's about a, a yard long. Let me look on my, it, it, well, it's 20, about 22 inches long, 23 inches long, actually. So um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It was a fun stitch. So I just kind of wanted to show that off just so you could see what's in my mind and what's in my future um, teaching. Eventually I will submit this um, for, for teaching somewhere if you're interested in it. My email's there, email me and I will come up with, um, the cost and other information about the class. It would probably be a two day class again. I actually, I was trying to find something to put it in. I found this little wonderful wooden thing, but it doesn't, doesn't fit quite right. So um, it could be wrapped around a spool. It could be a, a, um, a bell pull. It could be a lot of different things. So again, that's my new design. Um, one of my newest designs, I have another big one that I'm working on now, and that's what I've been working on. I took a little break from Sari, and I've just been digging through all my stitching books. You can see some of them back in the background, uh, over there, there. Um, that's some of them. Oh, there's my iron, too. Um, I pulled out, I have hundreds of uh, books with stitches. I love stitches. Anytime I see a, a needlework book somewhere. Um, if it's inexpensive, especially, I will buy it. I actually have several copies of books because I, oh, this is a cool book. So I buy it and then I already have it because I don't have them all memorized. But anyway, that is, um, that's what's going on in my life, what I'm uh, working on. So that's it for Floss Tube 14. Again, Thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed. So excited. My um, subscribers is, are well, well over 300 now. Uh, just a few, a month ago, I was excited to hit 100. And now I'm over 300. So I am so excited. And every time somebody joins, I just, yay, get excited. Um, so be sure to subscribe. That way you'll get notified when um, the next video posts. And again, I love to see comments on what you enjoyed about um, the Morning Glory Needleworks floss tube. So please let me know. Let me know what stitches you want to learn. The next um, 
The next floss tube will be on August 1st. I can't believe it's August, almost August already. Um, but I, I need an I ideas for new stitches. So, or for the next stitch of the month. So be sure to let me know um, what stitches you would like to learn. You can comment on the video. You can comment on the stitch of the month group, which is also growing by leaps and bounds. I think I'm getting close to 500 uh, members in that group. So again, very excited. Uh, just a reminder, all the links are posted below for everything. Um, there's the chapters are listed. And I will see you again on August 1st with a new floss tube. Thank you.